There was a king reigned in the east, there when kings would sit to feast. They get their fill before they think, with poisoned meat and poisoned drink. He gathered all that springs to birth from the many venomed earth. First a little, thence to more, he gathered all her killing store. And easy, smiling, seasoned, sound, sate the king when the healths went round. They put arsenic in his meat and stared aghast to watch him eat. They put strychnine in his cup and shook to see him drink it up. They shook, they stared, as whites their shirt. Them it was, their poison hurt. I tell this tale as I heard told. Mithridates, he died old. Now, this is a poem, or part of a poem, by A. E. Houseman, the Shropshire Lad, and this is generally referred to as just the Mithridates part of the poem. Um, it's the story of Mithridates Eupator, one of Rome's greatest enemies. Um, the Romans defeated him crushingly twice, and he was on the point of raising another army, a third army, uh, to attack Rome after having been crushingly defeated. Um, and he planned actually to conquer the Roman Empire at Rome's height of power. Um, it's the period that takes place in Roman history just before Julius Caesar. Now, the thing that's interesting about this poem is the fact that Mithridates met uh, defeat after defeat after defeat, but his spirit was uncrushable. He uh, eventually killed himself, um, but one can almost imagine uh, he was in his castle as the Roman army closed in and he was just talking to his friends and said, my God, we gave them a hell of a scare, didn't we? But they're not taking me alive. That would have been in keeping with um, the Mithridates that has come down to us through history. This poem that I read is a story that is recounted, I believe, through Plutarch, who said that uh, Mithridates was um, the king in a court in a country that was particularly prone to conspiracies and attempts to overthrow and kill the king, and that is, of course, how he managed to become king himself. Um, and his sister wife, um, they married their sisters in the kingdom of uh, Pontus, which is uh, Mithridates' his kingdom, attempted to poison him. She handed him a cup full of wine, said, drink from my cup, brother. He took the cup, sure, drank it, wait a minute, had another drink, sloshed it around in his mouth, and he said, ah, strychnine, arsenic, okay, now you have some. And, of course, his sister wife drank it and was killed by the poison. He had actually, um, as the poem says, gathered all that springs to earth from the many venomed earth, all the poisons that he could find, and he fed himself small amounts of them over a long period of time. And uh, he managed to make himself immune to poison. I don't know if that's actually possible, but that's what the ancients believed he had done. And Hausman says that Mithridates, uh, the king of Pontus, Mithridates Eupator, was something of a victorious character because he just kept hammering away at life. And yes, he did eventually commit suicide, but he did it in a way that is almost triumphant. I'm generally opposed to suicide as a, as a way out, but sometimes I suppose if you're faced with being uh, paraded through Rome and then uh, ceremonially strangled in the Forum, like we saw in the TV series Rome, um, it might be a good idea to fall on your sword. So his suicide was something of a triumph. He was saying, they're not going to march me in their damn parade. And that was the end of Mithridates. It's an interesting uh, comment on the way that one deals with life's trials and uh, tribulations. Of course, Mithridates accepted the fact that the Romans were going to try and kill him. Of course, he accepted the fact that everyone around him in his life was going to kill him. But he took precautions. He gathered all that springs to earth, to birth rather, from the many venomed earth. 
that strikes me as the best way to deal with the fact that there is suffering in this world. You accept it, and you move on. You do what you can. Some people might think that that's not really a victory, but it's really a matter of, of opinion whether or not Mithridates won. He died old, though. That's the point of the last line of the poem. But to be perfectly honest, I'm not really here to talk about Mithridates. I'm here to talk about um, how charisma can be abused. A lot of people, rightfully if you ask me, have been uh, pointing out my habit of smiling at everybody and my generally jovial disposition in something as serious as antinatalism, uh, depression, and suicide. Um, it's been said that uh, the devil wears Prada and that I'm to be deeply distrusted because of the way that I, um, I approach this subject and my delivery. Strangely enough, I agree with everyone who takes that point of view. Beware my charisma. Don't get fooled by me using poetic language or spouting off poetry. Remember, stick to the truth of the matter. Now, the thing is, what interests me is people who say that I'm, um, I'm to be distrusted because of my attempts at being charismatic are also saying that I'm not charismatic at all. Fine, I don't have a problem with that. I'm rather glad that people see right through me. There are other people in this debate. They're kind of invisible at the moment. But they have a hundred times the charisma that I do. Beware of charisma. Beware of the abuse of charisma. Thank you.